Hey guys, this is a quick intro to the video before the intro to the video. Um, stick with the, the video as halfway through airbrushing it. I was using the cheap airbrush, which we're going to go over in about two seconds here. And uh, what happened was uh, I thought I was struggling with these uh, craft paints. So what I did was I ended up switching over to this. I mean, I mentioned it during the video, but I want you guys to see it in action. So not to forward through. Um, and you're wondering, if you forward through, you wonder why at the end why I'm describing painting with this. And that's why I, I thought I was struggling. So what we did was we tried different paints in this, including uh, this primer is what I tried doing this all clad primer in this so I can make sure it wasn't the gun and it sprayed that beautifully. So as I said, this is an intro to the video that you're about to begin watching. Uh, I'm telling you during the video, I ended up switching to this gun, but I mentioned it, but I want you to know uh, to stick with it and you'll know you'll see what happened. And uh, anyway, on to the real intro. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the bench. And today we are going to be testing out uh, the next level of cheap airbrush. This Pache $20 starter airbrush set. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. They don't accept the coupon. So it's 20 bucks is 20 bucks. So uh, at the end of this video, if you guys are interested, I'll put a link to Amazon, which also sells the same brush for 20 bucks. I figured if you don't have a harbor, if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you, then you could just grab it at uh, Amazon because the price will be the exact same thing. Now this is the step above my previous cheap airbrush test, which was this one. If you didn't see that video, go back and watch that one. This is the same idea, the Venturi effect, where it just blows air out the nozzle and you put your and the paint in the jar just comes up the tube because the Venturi effects makes a suction effect, therefore blowing the paint right out of the jar and onto your object. And shockingly, this thing worked pretty well. <laughs> it really did. Watch the video if you haven't seen it. But uh, so the next step up, I figured, was this. I'm also planning on getting uh, Pache's H, which is it's all uh, aluminum and metal and uh, plated. It's the it's the next step up from this, and you can interchange the tips and whatnot. And I'm going to use that for a couple of car model tests. So that test is coming up down the road. This is kind of the entry level version of that airbrush. Now I said I was going to test cheap metallic paints, and in the picture. In the community section, I showed uh, all these paints. But what I figured I would do is I would divide it up into two videos with two separate airbrushes. So with the tester paints, I'll do that with, you ready? This one. This is the cheap Harbor Freight version of this airbrush. This was 10 bucks. It's regularly $12.99, but it's on sale this week for $9.99. And uh, look at the packaging. I had to check it before I left the store. It was just a mess. And... Um, Anyway, it, really, it looks exactly like this one. There's a couple of differences. We'll go over that when I do this test in the next few days. But what I figured was when I test this one, I'll test these paints. And for this one, we'll test these craft store metallic paints. So I'll divide the test up, and uh, we're going to do it that way. But um, before I even get going, I want to show you guys, before you say this one's only 10 bucks, this one's $20, uh, just so you know, the difference is the fittings. Um, it's plastic where these are it's metal so yeah we'll open this up in a second but that's the difference and it has these ugly stickers on the glass jar just drawing the purpose of having a glass jar I, I try to get it off I like to see the paint and where it is when I'm airbrushing and who stuck this label on this thing is a fool now there is another jar in here anyway this one is for another test and we'll be doing that in the next few days but for today's test, we're going to concentrate on the Pache. Let me get this out of the way. And get the tester paints out of the way. And we're just going to concentrate on these and this airbrush. Ah, glass jar. And I can see through it. I guess these are our instructions. Don't really need many. It's just kind of the same idea. This goes in here. It's going to do the same idea. It's just a little more uh, built a little better. And the nozzle and the air meet in the here. And you can adjust it clockwise, I believe, if it's like the other one I use. Yes. 
paint flow. More paint, turn the uh, nozzle counterclockwise. So you're going to go counter and then clockwise. And that's how you get it. So for less paint flow, <clears throat> less paint, turn the fluid tip nozzle clockwise. So, so that's it. So the closer we get, I guess it's going to shoot out less uh, paint. And the uh, counterclockwise is more. And that's it. And I guess I can adjust it while I'm going in it because you can't really adjust the air. Um, a lot of people asked about the fittings that fit in here because this is made for a, a jar, a, a, a can of propellant, or you can get the uh, fitting to fit your compressor. Well, what I did was I actually have the fitting that fits on the end of this. And uh, it's a set that came with... Uh, like eight different fittings so it covers all your bases it's on amazon i have the link in the other video but uh you just you you, you um you know i gotta find the right fitting you f you attach it to here and, and it fits any standard hose so i'll show you that uh, when i get to the uh to the compressor portion but that's it we're going to mix these paints and we're going to try it to this basic 20 dollars airbrush it be, it's supposed to be the next step up from that real cheap one i hope it is you know um, we will find out soon. At least it has glass jars. And I'm looking in to get a set of glass jars by the time I do the next test. And um, little caps for these so you can actually store the paint in these permanently and just use them over and over, which is a great idea. Um, well, here's the colors that we're going to work with. Here is my windshield washer fluid. If you want to know uh, how we mix and thin these paints, watch my video, um, how to airbrush the uh, cheap craft store paint. But these are Extreme Sheens from DecoArt. And uh, they, they supposedly have a nice pearlescence effect. Oh, that's good looking. So that is Aquamarine, Sapphire. Oh, that's nice. That looks like that Subaru Blue that I like. Subaru Blue. Say that fast. Antique Bronze. Nice. Extreme Sheen Silver. I hope these look uh, like this when they're painted. This is Extreme Sheen 24K Gold. 24 karat gold. Oh, that is bright. Whoa. Garnet. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's a good looking red. That looks more like a Monday car color, maroon, antique copper. This is a different thing. This is folk art, folk art, and here's another deco, but it's not the extreme sheen. And I have a bunch more too, but I might spray most of them off camera and then show you guys the results. This is antique copper. That's nice looking. That is good looking. All right, same thing, folk art. This is gunmetal gray. Hopefully this is a pearl. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's really nice. I hope. Wow. I hope this airbrush is like that. It's the kind of color I like. And this is shimmering silver. Back to the DecoWatt brand. That's nice, too. That's a nice looking aluminum or silver. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to mix these up. And I'm going to have to uh, clean between uh, coats. Uh, between colors, obviously. But... Uh, like I said, I'm not going to go through how to mix them and all because I already did a video on that. So, But we're going to test the airbrush is what we want to test. And we want to see how these metallics look. It's a two-for-one test. Um, anyway, I'm going to put the camera on pause and head over to the booth. And I'm going to start mixing these colors in no particular order. I might not do them all on camera. But uh, I don't want the video will go on forever. <laughs> but uh, We'll get the uh, at least four or five on camera. And we'll see how these things work and we'll see how this airbrush works. All right, guys? See you back at the booth. All right, guys, here we are back at the booth. We're going to start with Extreme Sheen Sapphire. Uh, I had to thin it quite a bit. It was really thick. It's really thick. You could probably thin this to two and a half times this amount. So if this works, you're really getting value for your dollar. But boy, I had to thin it quite a bit. And then uh, don't forget, grab a sheet and uh, you know, see where you, you stand with the mess, with the uh, size of the cone, so to speak. And don't forget, now it says to go, let's put this out of the way, it says to go counterclockwise for less, can you see it? And all the way up for more, that's a lot right there, look, right? 
Then we're going to turn it down a bit. That's none. But there you go. That, that's a good in between. Now this is a true acrylic. This is probably going to run. I'm going to have to go pretty gentle with this. Because um, I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, air dry it. You know. Well, let's see how it works. I'm way back because it is blowing this stuff right out. That's a good looking color. Now it looks like my traditional video on how to airbrush uh, acrylics. This isn't a uh, dual action, so I can't really sit here and air dry it, which is a, uh, a flaw. I guess you can blow it off for 20 seconds with your own the two lips and dry it off but let's see how it goes on it's not really running let's try and increase it a little bit eh, it's getting the job done it's not running it's working Took about five minutes of me uh, with water. Put water in these things, and you practice, uh, you know, how much you're going to need, how much uh, you want to adjust your nozzle. That's it. That's it. It looks, it looks good. Again, it it works. Probably great for enough, like I said, a car a car model. This is probably perfect. Um, all right, I'm going to do another one. I'll put it over uh, some primer. And I'll do the rest back and forth. Uh, I'll spray some off camera too. But uh, I'll let this dry and we'll check this out at the end and uh, see what we end up with. All right, guys, let me go get the next color. I gotta clean this out and see what that's like and uh, move on to the next one. All right, guys, we're going in with Extreme Sheen Silver. Um, it looks like this stuff needs a primer and I'm gonna show you why. Look, this one ran off to the edges. And the spoon with the primer did not. So we're gonna go with primer only on these babies. So the silver is going over this primer spoon. This is gray. Uh, hold on. It's the Surfacer 1200. So let's see what we get. to see on camera. It's starting to get the silvery shine. And then it looks like it clogs up. Yeah, nothing's coming out. So I'm going to increase the flow. Yeah, nothing's coming out. Yep. Yeah. I imagine... Can you see how thin it is? So it's going to be thinner than that. So... I'm going to pause this. I'm going to leave this on camera so you guys can see how thin it really has to be. I'm going to thin it up. We're going to shoot it again. All right, guys, I'm back. I thinned it out. Can you see it? It's at least 50-50, but I think it's because these things are just so thick with the, the metallic and the little bits in it, the little flakes, that you really got to thin it out. And look, it clogged up again. Oh, there we go. So the air pressure is on about 30. And you got to thin this stuff out. I don't know if it's the gun or the paint. I think it's the paint, you know. But there you go. It's a nice silver. It looks good. I'll let this dry. I'll go on to the next color. I'm going to cut it at least in half. I'm going to go probably 60-40. Thin it to paint. But, uh, all right. We'll let this dry. And we'll go on to the next color. Looks good, though, once you get it right. All right, guys, here we go. This one is gunmetal. And I hope this one goes well. Now, I thinned this one way, way more, you know, more than half, you know, 60-40. And it looks like I'm finally getting the proper flow. Oh, too much flow. <laughs> but there it is. It goes on like regular acrylic wood. Um, my problem is 
is I'm used to, uh, I don't have a, a splitter yet for my airbrush, and I'm used to um, air drying it, you know, and my, my how to airbrush. So what you do is you back this all the way down, see this, in cl counterclockwise, and just air comes out. So what I'm left with is the air dryer as I normally would on my acrylics. Because you're gonna get this to dry. Because it just it's just coming out in great amounts. You know, this is more more of your primer, you know, car body. You're not gonna do any I don't think you're gonna do any details with this thing at all, you know. But see I'm just I'm just drying it. All right, now we're gonna crank it in and get a little bit of a paint out of it. Let's see what we get. Nope, it's not working. Let's see. Oh wait a minute, it's starting to it's starting to level off. There it goes. Oh yeah, there it goes. It leveled right out too. Look at that. It probably dries nice too. You know. Let's try and put it on heavy. See what happens if it goes on really heavy. I mean, that's how this thing sprays anyway, right? I know it's going to run, but I'm just curious. Now, don't forget, this probably works great with uh, normal paint. I mean, no, uh, hobby paint, lacquers, uh, acrylic hybrids. Looks pretty good. Not bad. It looks all right. Well, we'll let this dry. Here's the other one. You know? As the paint dries, it, it sticks to the... It lets the next coat stick to it, you know? But, uh, all right, let's try another one. And uh, maybe one or two more, then we'll wrap this up. I'll do more off-camera so we can see the results. All right, guys? I'll be right back. Hey, guys. Now we're going to switch over. As you saw in my intro, um, I'm going to switch over using a different paint in the... In the airbrush and uh, we're gonna go with this all clad black primer and we're gonna go on spoons uh, not thin this stuff is straight out of the jar into uh, this jar and um, I'm doing this because I know that yeah see a big difference I notice it's the uh, the airbrush is struggling a bit with those super thick cheap craft paints and I think it needs a better atomization process than just blowing it out. Whereas these primers really uh, don't need it. You know, you don't need a, a great atomization. You're just laying down a layer of primer. And, and you know, there it is. You know, I'll do another one. Hold on. See it? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to switch over after this and do the metallic craft paints in one of my uh, my good uh, Japanese airbrushes, and we'll see how the paints work then. I think the cheaper the paint, the better the airbrush they need. But that that's that's just a theory I'm working on now. <laughs> I think it needs better atomization, you know, because look how good this stuff. It, these cheap airbrushes lay down a simple paint, in particular this. Uh, these lacquers and, I, and uh, good primers. Just throw it in. Um, let's do another one, I guess. I can always use primer spoons. And look, it goes on nice. I imagine, like I said, if you put an enamel or a, uh, a lacquer in this, bright red or something, you could probably paint a nice car, a car kit with this easy. That's my guess. It's probably its purpose, as this was the only kind of airbrush you could get back in the day, as they say. So you get a jar. They sell little caps that fit over the ends. I'll go with that at the end of the video. And you can keep the same paint in it and just cap it. So you can keep all your primers in these jars. And when you want to prime, you just plug it in and go. You know? There you go. So after this, I'm going to switch over to... I think I'm going to go with uh, my Trigger Procon. We'll go with this. And uh, we'll try the rest of the uh, craft paints in the better airbrush and see what the result is there. 
All right, I'll finish them up and I'll get right back to you. All right, guys, now let's see how it works. We're going to do uh, the Aquamarine Extreme Sheen. We're going to see how this works in uh, one of my good airbrushes, my $150 one. I think this paint will work great, but I think it needs a good airbrush. Yeah, see, it, it um, now, plus with the dual action, I can air dry it a little easier. But it atomizes much better. But the other one's just throwing gobs of this stuff out. And this stuff really needs to be broken down fine for it to work for how we want to use it. You know, and it's a, it's a really big difference here. You know, matter of fact, I might even go back and do one of the colors that I've done already. You can see the blue, it's all runny, and uh, you can see the difference. But that's why I, I split this uh, at, at the beginning. I told you guys we're going to go with a different method. Now, the other airbrush isn't bad. It has its purpose, but I just think it's going to have trouble airbrushing these, these, uh, these cheap, real thick paints. Whereas this one, when you break it down so much, it just atomizes it at a nicer level. Can you see the difference? I mean, it's a huge difference. You know, so uh, let me go back and get a few more colors done with this airbrush. We'll go through those. I might airbrush one of the older colors, one of the first ones I did with this brush, as we're going to be actually testing two things in this video these paints and that other airbrush. Anyway, let me clean this out and move on to the next color. Oop. All right, guys, here we go. Antique copper. Go with another prime spoon. See what we get. All right, now you gotta dry it off. You gotta dry it off. Flash dry it. This looks like it could be a good looking color, too. Real nice. Whoa. I had a feeling this would look good. Some of my high-end brand coppers and stuff really don't look good. But uh, this ain't bad. I'm flash drying it. Big difference using the better airbrush for the these metallic craft paints. Big difference. Massive difference. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. All right, guys, let me clean this out. Get on to the next color. All right, guys, sorry I hit the camera. Uh, here we go with uh, Garnet. Um, this has the potential to be a good looking color. So I hope it is. Let's see. All right, I'm going to go a little more uh, gentler with this, with the old process. I didn't have to thin this one as much with the better airbrush. Uh, I went more to the traditional 50-50. The other one I had to go at least 60, 60-40, thinner to paint. But uh, this, this is a, a five needle, this airbrush. It can handle this thicker stuff. But even with the uh, my three... Uh, millimeter, I think uh, it still would be better than that cheap airbrush. The cheap airbrush works great with the traditional acrylics that I have, the Tamiya and uh, the lacquers. It, 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 it works perfectly. You know, you could do a whole model, I think, no problem if you want to primer it. Or like a nice solid red car body or any of that. Look at this. I knew, I knew this would be a good looking color. Beautiful color. All right, we'll let that dry. Woo, that is nice. I like that. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reshoot one of the other colors with this airbrush so we can compare the quality between the two. 
and um, after that we'll wrap this up all right guys we're back with the final test which will be repainting the sapphire through the better airbrush the hundred and fifty dollar airbrush so let's see the difference and then we'll compare them at the end now like I said it doesn't make the other brand brush bad it actually is pretty good for what it is it's just I think if you're gonna spray these cheap craft paints it's a bit of a dichotomy because I think you need a better airbrush now you don't need a hundred and fifty dollar airbrush but I think you need one that atomizes the paint where the other one does not do that there's the first layer already looks great let's flash dry it that red was beautiful that went on great Just flash dry in. Looks like it's dry already. Let's try it a little bit more. You know, this is a pretty good looking metallic. It, it's not really gaudy. Like you, I think you could paint a car model with this, and it won't look like a toy. It'll actually look like a legitimate paint job. Whereas some of this stuff, you know, has that over-the-top sparkle to it, I guess is the word I'm looking for. There we go. All right, now we'll let this dry. We'll compare it to the other airbrushes. And uh, plus we'll go over how the primer dried using the cheap airbrush. You know, it has its place. It has its place. And um, that's it. I did a bunch of other colors off camera, and we'll show you all those at the end. And we'll go over them, and these metallics are really nice. That's another good conclusion here. Anyway, I'll see you back at the bench. All right, guys, here we go. Back at the bench. And we have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of results here. Um, I'll go over what we did with the first batch with the uh, cheap $20 airbrush. Um, it's probably a little better than the other one I did at 10 bucks. Now, I do have a $10 version of this we will be testing soon because you can adjust it easier than the other one. The other one, and it's all plastic. The other one, and the, it looks like the threads are probably not even going to last long. At least these are metal threads, and you can adjust it, you know, properly. And this does work with my regular lacquers really well, uh, particularly the all clad and the primers. We'll go over that in a second. But um, here's the results with that airbrush. All right, silver, not bad, huh? That's the silver. Now this is extreme sheen, all right? These cost a little more than the other ones, like a buck more than your regular cheapies. $1.79 or something like that, $2. You know, catch them on sale too, you get them real cheap. All right, gunmetal, look at that. I think that's a pretty good looking gunmetal compared to the ones we've been testing. That's excellent. All right. What else did we test? I'm trying to make sure I get all the right ones because these I did off camera. All right. I did this. All right. Now, here's what happened. Here's when we first started, and I didn't have it adjusted right. I didn't have it thinned properly. So we get rid of that. I did it on camera anyway. Now, I bumped it, so that's what this nick is. But not bad. This isn't bad, you know. And then... At this point, I realized it was struggling to do these paints in the cheap, cheap airbrush. So what I did was I went back, took out the Procon 5mm trigger airbrush, and that is what I got. Now we'll go over the other ones in the back because I finished off the rest with these other with the other airbrush. Look at the difference. I mean, uh, you can't really see it there. It's kind of chunky and a little not as glossy on this one. This one is just beautiful. So the better airbrush makes the cheaper paints just come out better. Now, these aren't bad. Obviously, these are all great. I just thought the ease of painting them was, was better. It atomized much better in the better airbrush, you know. So that was with the better airbrush. And so are the rest I'm going to show you right now. Antique copper. Using, I'll put the Procon right here, using that airbrush. Look at that. That's a good-looking copper. That's that, that's terrific, guys. All right. 
All right. Aquamarine. Look at that. Another great looking color. All right. Garnet. A beautiful red. This will look great on a car. Look at that. Let this dry thoroughly, then I would give it a nice gloss coat, which I did on a couple others coming up. I'll show you the difference when you get a gloss coat on them. And some of the other metallics I tested off camera. Uh, Inca Gold. I'm going to wash my hands, so I'll show you my soap that I've been using lately. This is over a white spoon. This is over a black spoon. Look at that. I like it when you can get two different shades out of the same bottle. That's the best. It's value for dollar right there. All right. Sterling silver. That's over a white spoon. A black spoon. Obviously, you can see some of the black right there. Let's get this out of the way so you guys can see it against the black. There you go. Another one where you get two different colors. More of a, an aluminum and a silver. You kind of get two. Sorry, guys. I'm adjusting my cheek. You can get two and one. Look at that. Excellent. All right. This is metallic gold. That's over a black spoon. Even that looks good for gold. You know, a lot of my uh, Tamiya and the, the spray cans we've been testing, this looks as good as that, if not better, I think. Let's go with the titanium because it's close to the gold. This is titanium gold. Look at that. Man, that looks terrific. That's a great color. Now with these others, I gloss coated because I want to see the difference. This is bright red. And see the shine? I put a gloss coat on it. A Vallejo uh, spray can is what I used. Vallejo spray can gloss. How cool did that come out? Look at this. Check this one out. Check this one out. This is uh, galvanized tin. That is an awesome, <laughs> awesome color. This is uh, the galvanized tin over white spoon, gloss coated. Look at the result. Look at that. This is as good as any of the, the paints I've been using. It's just a great color. And before I even started doing a color shift test, which is coming up, craft color shift test, I use this one, Folk Art Color Shift Black Flash. All right? That's what it looks like in the jar. When I saw it in the store, I said, well, i got to try that. And it ended up looking just like that. Over black and over white. Now, not exactly a color shift, but I think it's not truly a color shift. I think it's, it's, uh, it's got shades of black. See the black shading over the gold? That's what that's the shifting that it does in this. But how nice is this color? It didn't have the great shift effect till I gloss coated it. I want I want you guys to know you could tell I gloss coated this. Wow, that I mean, awesome, awesome color. This will look good in the frame for a Gundam for sure. And that's that. Now, this is yes, this is full cart too. They all perform well, to tell you the truth. Um, where did I want to go to here? Oh, and here's the primer done through this airbrush. So the the uh, black primer. Sorry, guys, I paused the camera there. I bumped into it. Um, this is the black all clad, the standard primer they make. Look at how nice this came out. And this. Is with this so this is where it really uh, it's really at home with the, uh, just an even lacquer I know if you painted a car model ugh, which one you know you get this nice look nice even look you know because it's it's like a spray can it's basically like a spray can but um, I would have one just for putting on primers just for primers alone I would keep one you know or just for uh, the car models and I guess you can take these little 
testers kits and just dump the whole thing in for what was that dollar eighty for that thing and do a whole do your car body pick a, you know, there's tons of colors to choose from so it has its purpose it just struggled a bit with these uh these cheap acrylics because um I think they were just really uh the flaking and it just didn't atomize it properly you needed a good atomization to get the best results and I mean this really told the story is how nice it did this when I went back and did the same paint. But it works with this for sure. And it probably works. And it works, of course, with all your standard lacquers and uh, acrylics. Uh, when I say acrylic, I mean uh, it probably worked good with uh, Model Air, you know. But this stuff had a hard time. I, I think it did. That's my opinion. But, like I said, just get one and just use it for primers. It's worth it. Just use it for primers or, like I said, spray these uh, cheap bottles, thin them down 50-50 and... Uh, paint your models with that so they, it has a place it does have a place but anyway this is also a test on these metallic colors which are really terrific I, I just think these things are terrific this color shift one is beautiful sorry guys for my arm you know this gun metal is just awesome you know this red I thought was terrific this titanium over here this galvanized tin what a beautiful color so um, as much as it was, I was testing the cheap airbrush, I was also testing these. And uh, that's the results. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, hit that like button because it helps a lot. And uh, please subscribe. i got more to go. I'm currently working on the decal uh, video. And i got some new decals I'm testing with, and I'm getting there. And I think I should have that video up on Sunday. I hope to have it up on Sunday. I'll give you guys... Walk across the room. Here's the size of the wings that I'm um, I painted with Tamiya Gray. And look at all the rivets and lines. So that's what we're going to test putting the decals over. That's going to be a real good test. So stick around for that. That's going to be a great video. Um, I'm going to learn a lot myself as much as you guys are along with me. So that is that. Coming up at some point, we'll test the cheaper version, half the price of this one. This is from uh, Harbor Freight. Same thing, but it's all plastic. It, it's it's you know, it's a little junkier. The glass jars are there, but the fitting is is plastic, and this is uh, some kind of a brass. Um, but anyway, we'll try it. We'll try it. But then again, I won't use these uh, these cheap paints. We're gonna try this with. Uh, we'll probably do that with with these. Is what we'll do. And um, that's that. Now my hands are nice and clean. I did it when I paused the video. Look at them. Yes. And this is not a paid advertisement. Uh, that orange soap I showed you guys earlier in a couple videos ago uh, it ran out and I had to go order some I just, when uh, this popped up at six dollars it's the same one fast orange that little one I had for about a year and a half <laughs> that's how long I've been using this stuff for 20 years I just love it and uh, when I went to reorder it six bucks on prime it came overnight look at this and it's just the best it smells like orange but it, it cleans your hands beautifully it takes all this paint off and I, I just love this stuff and uh, I'm not affiliated at all but uh, I want to show you the size of the jar that I got when I reordered it. I'll put a link in the below so you guys can uh, grab that if you want. It's only six bucks. It's worth having in, in your in your shop for sure. Anyway, guys, that was a test. It was a good one, pretty thorough, and uh, we'll probably see you in a couple days. Hopefully, it's the decal shootout, and I got a surprise coming in the mail. Um, something that's going to help dry your paints ultra fast, and uh, that's a surprise that's coming up. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video.